This is Colin McGuigan for AFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm joined by Frank Smith on a crazy week for Matchroom. Frank, how's things, mate? All good, mate. It's interesting to see you at a new place. I know. It's, uh, I'm, st- I'm still on the podcast, still doing the Brawl Boxing podcast, but uh, yeah, it's just a, a new venture. So um, yeah, it's good to be speaking to you in this capacity too. Um, thank you. Appreciate it. We'll, we'll start on the massive news, the massive announcement last night. A um, bit of a family affair for you. Um, you Bank Junior Ben announced last night. Just how big is this fight? It's massive. You know, just the numbers we've seen from last night's announcement, you know, um, uh, I think it it really transcends the audience. It, it's age groups of, you know, from my parents who are nearly 70 to 15-year-olds, you know, it, and there's not many fights like it. And it really does feel like one of the biggest fights in, in British boxing right now, you know, not just this year, but in many years. Well, that, that's what I was going to touch on. Probably aside of AJ Fury, this is the biggest fight in boxing. Um, forget about everything else. This is huge. Could this have potentially went to a stadium? Because I was talking to a few friends last night about this. Could you have looked at maybe a stadium or was it just that you were set on the O2 and you know that you'll sell it out, but that's just how you just wanted it to go? Uh, I think, you know, we did look at options. At the same time, it's obviously October 8th. Yeah. Weather is questionable in the UK. In October, we've never really done a stadium show beyond September. We did the Povetkin fight at Wembley. Football fixtures made it a little bit difficult as well. So there were a number of things that made it quite hard. And I think the key was, you know, we can we can sell this fight at the, out at the O2 um, very, very quickly. And, you know, we haven't actually done a mega, mega fight at the O2 in, in a long time in terms of a sold out huge audience. We've had COVID, obviously. And this is... You know, as a venue, it's an unbelievable venue for a night like that. When you've got that place packed out, which this will be, is uh, there's not many, not many better places for it. So, you know, we did look at a stadium, but a number of reasons why we didn't do it. Um, and, you know, maybe we'll see three or four of these and a few of them will be in the stadium. <laughs> that's, what, that's what you're hoping for. This is a family affair for you, this one. You, you've obviously, you, you promote Connor Ben and, and your, your ties with the Eubank family. How hard is it for you to stay on the fence in this one? Or is it, is it hard at all? Uh, no, I think for anyone who knows me, I'm quite like a sort of level-headed, basic person in terms of I don't get too emotional about things and business is business, family is family. I can't do anything about them actually fighting each other. I make absolutely zero difference to that point. So ultimately, the best person is going to win. Um, I can't, I'm not, if you watch me at a fight as well, Connor, Connor actually laughs about it if you watch me at a fight i'm not the jump up and down scream shout celebrate person i'm the i'm looking around at the event at the venue at what's going on is there problems anywhere like the fight to me is the secondary bit in truth maybe not right but we put on shows that's our business so you know for me i the best man will win i can make absolutely zero difference to that part of it and all i can do in the build-up is make it as big as possible um, and I think my missus has already probably heard some phone calls where she's given me the eye. Uh, <laughs> but but uh, no, it's, it's all it's all fun again. It's all fun. If uh, if you know we're, we're talking about this going down the line, is there a possibility that this is going to be like a UK wide press conference where you're going to go like all different cities, or is it going to be just the one press conference, or what way have you looked at that? I think because of the time frame, you know, we're not actually that far away from the fight. We've got about eight weeks until fight night now from, from the weekend. Um, so I think, you know, probably later today when this interview goes out, we would have announced the press conference, which is going to take place on Friday uh, in London. Um, so there will just be a one, you know, a one press conference. And, you know, then the guys can focus on camp. We're going to do a lot of storytelling, a lot of content in the build up to this. But it's a, it's a big, big occasion and it needs to be, the, the story needs to be told in the right way. So, you know, you, you, you should look forward to a lot of, you know, build up content we've shown in our last few, you know, our last few shows, what, what we can deliver. And that's what we're aiming to do for this in an even bigger way. So you no know, press conference, like I say, Friday will be announced soon. Um, and then, you know, we'll be getting a lot of different stuff out there in the build up to the fight. There's a, a potential Eubank ban on the undercard as well. It, could it potentially happen? I've seen Sam Jones talk about it and Harlem Eubank and Harley Ben. Is there a chance that we might see uh, more of that down the undercard? Uh, I haven't heard about that one, to be honest. Um, you know, I think 
Harlem obviously thought not long ago. I'm not sure if he'll fight on this show. I don't, I don't think so. We're obviously working. You know, it's good to be working very closely with our friends, the the, the Sowerland brothers at, the, at Wasserman, Keller and Nissa. Um, so we're going to work closely with them on the undercard for the show. Um, I haven't heard about that one, but let, let's see. Maybe maybe we need some more family grudges on there as well. Yeah, well, it would be good. Obviously, I need to address the elephant in the room for this fight because you have labelled it as a the zone pay-per-view. You've, you know, whenever this first came out, the whole thing about the zone was that it was a, kind of like an alternative to the pay per view. Um, times have changed since then, but how come the, the switch? Because obviously, we're going to see AJ Usyk pay per view and on Sky pay per view, but we're going to see a pay per view. We'll see Canelo GGG, and then now we'll see uh, Eubank Ben pay per view. How come the landscape's kind of changed in that regard? I think that ultimately <clears throat> the landscape does change in any business, you know, things. Things change, you know, businesses develop and business plans change. Um, to make the biggest, biggest fights like this is, it has to be on pay-per-view. Um, but our, we still have our obligation and the zone, you know, we still are going to deliver a huge schedules to the subscribers. And, you know, we'll get news out there very soon on what, you know, sort of September to December looks like. We've got some great shows lined up for that period. Um, but as I say, when every other broadcaster is putting shows on pay-per-view in order to compete you have to be able to compete financially and the way to do that is the pay-per-view model we stick to our word that the fights that need to be pay-per-view you know it's not every fight's going to be pay-per-view i know we've got a busy period of things but you're looking at anthony joshua who ultimately is the biggest pay-per-view star in the sport you're looking at canelo golovkin who again is alongside anthony joshua in a mega fight against, uh, you know, against Golovkin, the trilogy of that, which, you know, the last one was on pay-per-view as well on BT. Um, and then you're looking at Eubank Ben, which, again, is a huge fight. And on any platform, it would be pay-per-view. So, we but look, we stick by our word. We're going to continue to deliver great content as part of the subscription. And our aim is to get some details out on that very soon. And we're working working very hard behind the scenes with design to get that schedule out there. What, what sort of price are you looking at for pay-per-view on this one? Is it going to be a standard twenty four ninety five, or you're not too sure yet? That's something Design will release in due course. Um, that's for something they're working on now. As always, it's sort of the broadcaster sets that. Um, so, you know, that'll be news that will be released in due course. Mo moving on from, from the Ben Eubank um, fight for a moment, it's a massive few months coming up for, for Max Room. Your tweet last night kind of sold it. Um, you know, it's just, it's huge these three months in boxing. Never mind just for my friend, for boxing in general. Um, how big is next weekend for AJ against Usyk? Yeah, look, massive. AJ's got to go in there and he's got to uh, he's got to get his belts back. It's the biggest fight of his career. Um, but you know, he's been focused on this moment for a long time now. You know, all the way back to September, nearly twelve months ago. Um, and his dedication has been he's going to get back in the ring and and win those belts back. Um, so look, massive night for him. I truly believe he can do it. He's got a great team around him. He's in a great place. You know, it's been speaking to him. He's very confident. Um, and look, Usyk, Alexander Usyk is an amazing fighter. Everyone knows that. Um, but in heavyweight boxing, all of them can beat each other on their best day. And that night, Alexander Usyk was the better fighter. But on August 20 in Saudi Arabia, I think you're going to see an amazing performance from Anthony Joshua. I think you're going to see a three-time heavyweight champion of the world. And um, what lies ahead if AJ is victorious? Could we potentially see that that Fury fight down the line? Then I don't know. Maybe Fury Fury's not fighting <clears throat> Thor or Derek Chisora or whatever. I mean, I guess it depends on what mood uh, uh, Tyson wakes up on each day. But you know, we everyone wants to see the undisputed fight, obviously. Um, so let let's see how things play out on that front. That's definitely. AJ's, there's always been AJ's intention is to become the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. It's never been about Tyson Fury or, or Deontay Wilder or this person. It's just been about winning those belts. So let's see how things play out. You know, you might see uh, Tyson Fury fight Derek Chisora, Derek Chisora knock out Tyson Fury, and then Derek Chisora against Anthony Joshua for all the belts. Do you imagine? Wow. Um, but yeah, look, it's, it's interesting times. Focus, though, is 100% on on next Saturday and then what comes from there will, will happen you know we've been through this how many times have we been through these discussions of make that fight doesn't happen doesn't happen and you know it's, ne it's never been through us not wanting it to happen 
but it just hasn't. So let's focus on what's in front of us, what's set, and then 21st of August, we can go to work. It, is it disappointing for you that the zone couldn't land this fight on their platform? Or are you looking forward to, to working with your, your old colleagues at Sky or how does that sit with you? Look, we I think I've spoken about this before, you know, our relationship with Sky, we worked with Sky for a long, long time. Um, we still have a relationship with them on other sports, especially darts, which is huge. Um, and, you know, for us, it's not, we're not kids in playgrounds. It's, we will deliver, our job is to deliver a great event and to deliver a great show. You know, ultimately, would we have liked it on the zone? Of course we would have. But the zone and Anthony Joshua have committed their long-term future together beyond just one fight. You know, as I said before, Anthony is the, the commercially, commercially, if not alongside Canelo, the biggest commercial star in the sport um, and will continue to be that. So we've got a long time, a lot of shows, a lot of fights to come ahead. So this is this is one part of, of the journey. So, you know, DAZN have got some big nights ahead with him. Um, obviously, would have been great for it to have been on DAZN, but it's not. It's on Sky and we'll, you know, we will, as all as we always do, work professionally and deliver the best event. We're, we're about a month out from Canelo, GGG, the trilogy. Massive fight in Vegas. How big is this for Matron? Yeah, huge. I mean, it just shows where we've got to as a business, you know, from the standing start in 2018 or 2017, uh, starting with Danny Jacobs, then we on HBO, then we did our DAZN deal. And, you know, four years later, we're promoting the biggest fight, arguably, in US boxing. Um, and it's a, you know, it's a proud moment to do it as well. You know, we've been lucky enough to do Canelo, Billy Joe Saunders at the broken the attendance record for that. Canelo Bivol, uh, Canelo Callum Smith. You know, we're working with the biggest star in the sport. And you can say what you want about people saying about this, that, the other. No one else is delivering these shows week in, week out around the world to this level. You know, you might have a competitor delivering some big shows in the UK, delivering some big shows in the US. We're doing it in different countries every week of the year. And it's what we do and it's what we'll continue to do. So, you know, it's a good time for the business. And that's, it. like I say, a proud moment delivering Canelo Golovkin because it's been a long time coming. And I think as the fight comes around as well, people are starting to question. Now, we had periods where people would say, I think Canelo's going to do it easy. Now we're getting to people saying, I think Golovkin's, you know, in for a chance here. So I think it's going to be, it's going to be a real entertaining fight. And I can't wait for the 17th of September in Las Vegas. You know, whenever I've seen you and Eddie post last night um, about these next, three massive shows for Matchroom. It kind of just set it in stone how big <clears throat> this is for, for boxing. But then I'm thinking to myself, you still haven't announced Lee Wood's return. You still haven't announced Katie Taylor. You still haven't announced Ebony Bridges. Where do all these fights fit in in the schedule? Look, we, you know, as you know, we do 40, 45 shows a year around the world. It's hectic, but it's a lot of fun. And, you know, we, we've got some big nights, as you say, they're still to deliver. Like you say, Lee Wood, Josh Warrington, uh, Joe Caldina. Um, work just actually agreed a big fight for December as well, uh, a massive fight for December that we'll announce soon as well. Which I'm not, I'm not the one who you know I don't give clues away, but it was a good day yesterday. They got that agreed as well. But you know we've got endless talent and you know so many fighters to get out. So, so it's going to be a big, big end of the year. I promise you that. Can you give us a bit of a clue on that December one? Like something, uh, something to no, I quite like just saying it and then. You know, <laughs> Oh, uh, just, just sort of throwing it out there. Do, do you think that we could see some potential big Belfast fight nights with Kevin and Jarko coming up? Because I know that's something Eddie spoke about previous about coming back to Belfast. Is yeah, that is that on the horizon? Yeah, a hundred percent. We have we've had some great nights in Belfast over the years and some brilliant shows. You know when we promoted Frampton, um, and I, I saw as well the atmosphere for Conlon's return at the weekend. I mean, unbelievable. You know, he's a huge star, Michael Conlon, and well done for him on, you know, his comeback win as well. But I think that's definitely of interest for us. You know, I think ultimately we need to, we need to build the shows up and, you know, but like we saw at the weekend with Dalton Smith with the, with the next gen show. Now we're in a good place with the platform, you know, and our focus always to, was to deliver the mega, mega events. But at the same time, we need to grow the fighters of tomorrow. And, you know, Dalton Smith's Next Gen show last week, last weekend, just gone, was a great example of, uh, uh, of what can be done. We had 4,000, 4,500 people in the Sheffield Arena for that show. And I think that's what we can look at as well as, as we 
as we develop and you know grow out the plan. We've only been with the zone for a year now in the UK. Um, you know, it's gone quickly, but there's still so much more to be done. And I think, like I say, as we deliver these big events, we can keep looking at how do we distribute the schedule, maybe in different ways to to um, just you know bolster the the shows as well as grow the fighters and the talent we've got. So Belfast is definitely somewhere we're looking at. And I think Yarko is a perfect character to fill that. Um, obviously, you, you touched on it there with Michael Conlon and the massive night at the weekend. Did you have one eye on that for a potential Lee Wood rematch? Is that something that could happen down the line? Uh, yeah, possibly. But I think also the, the city ground would be quite nice for that one. Yeah, well, look, there's, there's so many options for that fight. But but obviously, Belfast, it's just a, it's a unique venue for boxing. And not, not just biased because I'm from Belfast, but that atmosphere on Saturday night was just different. So it would be great to see Matt Room come back. So that was it. But Frank, look, thanks so much for joining me. Mate. Really, really appreciate it. Um, and I'm sure we'll do this again soon. No worries, mate. Good to catch up. See you soon. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, my dad in the street against a heavyweight. I've gone back to the dad. I've punched him a few more times. Five blokes outside my front door. Can you come and help One hell of a fucking story, so stay tuned. Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness Act. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.